Hello, in this video, we will be talking about the notion of instruction set architecture, what exactly it is, why we need a, uh, why we need an instruction set architecture and uh, how this helps. So a bit of a definition, a uh, bit dated though. So if uh, we look at the history of computer architecture and then the notion of ISA, the ISA is defined as uh, the attributes of a system or let's say a processor which is seen by the programmer. That is the key. So it doesn't care about what exactly happens inside your uh, processor, how exactly uh, the processor executes instructions, whether it is taking care of some sophisticated techniques, it doesn't matter, right? What it, what it cares about is only the functional behavior. So as a programmer, as long as it is able to see what it should see, then uh, it, it's uh, good to go. And ISA is actually uh, the interface that provides these attributes, which are seen by a programmer. Okay. So, uh, this is a comic way of uh, looking into the isa um, so the software programmers are dancing and uh, the isa is actually the interface and of course the hardware or the microactors guy are actually doing the heavy lifting right so if we uh, look at the software the software can be your operating system compiler assembler whatever right and uh, the ISA is actually the handshake mechanism between all these layers in the system stack to the bottom of the system stack. It, it can go up to your transistors or maybe electrons, right? Because at the end of the day, they, they, they perform the actual work because of which you are using your iPad or mobile or whatever, right? So th this is the key. This is one of the uh, fundamental abstraction that helps in, uh, you know, making sure that the software guys, they, they should not know almost everything about the underlying hardware. Then there is something called a microarchitecture, which is not an ISA, which is not part of ISA. This is a specific implementation of an ISA. Okay. So the programmer or the software cannot see or access it. So simple example. An R instruction is part of an ISA, but a specific implementation of an order. If you remember your digital logic courses, you must have uh, studied various kinds of orders, right? That is the implementation of a particular order, which is not part of the ISA specification. So this is actually the micro architecture. So you can go for any kinds of uh, design. But ISA doesn't care about it as long as at the end of the day you perform the addition operation. So ISA, what does it provide? Uh, we have already looked at addressing modes, instruction types and formats, upcodes, registers. This you will see in your OS course. These are the things that will come slowly in this course. So some of them are actually dealing with memory, how you are accessing memory. Um, what kind of alignment and all uh, uh, addressability and other issues and uh, instructions like what kind of instructions how do they access what is their format right so uh, as i mentioned just two slides before uh, isa is kind of a you know the the agent which is satisfying the needs of all kinds of softwares right uh without giving all the details of the underlying hardware right so micro architecture will be uh rest of this course after we complete isa so you can talk about uh, caches memory controllers branch predictors prefetchers uh highly sophisticated processors the current processors that are there in uh, your commercial machines all will be part of uh, micro architecture and not isa so, but, but how microarchitecture and ISA are, are kind of glued together uh, so that your, your processor uh, or let, let's put it uh, in this way, let's, uh, your hardware actually uh, give an impression that everything is okay from the programmer point of view, right? 
So we can bring the notion of a state machine here. Uh, so let's assume the processor is in status. Okay. Then you execute an instruction and then the processor moves to let's say state SS, right? So let's say with an odd instruction, the processor moved to a new state, right? But as long as the new state respects the ISA specification, then there is no issue. So what I meant to communicate here is micro architecture, no matter what it does, no matter how fancy techniques it applies at the hardware, it has to respect the ISA at the end of the day, right? So if we have to define what exactly is a state, so the state can be, uh, you know, the content of registers, right? Just, just one example. So th this is the information that is uh, held in the processor. The processor has many things uh, as you have seen so far. Uh, and th this information should be uh, helpful before processing the next instruction. Okay. So this is like a state machine, which is uh, moving from one state to another, depending on what instruction you are executing. But the, at the end of uh, execution of one instruction, um, the, the, the context or, or the information that is stored inside a state uh, should obey the IC. Okay. So this course, if you look at slowly, we are moving into uh, or we will be moving into a world where we'll be dealing with 80 to 90 percent of the micro architecture isa we have already talked about MIPS, and we won't be dealing with uh, many isas uh, apart from few uh, few additional lectures so mostly we'll be talking about micro architecture and uh, assuming uh, isa and micro architecture they, they, they already have a contract so how micro architecture can help uh, improving performance, security, and all other aspects. That will be the focus of the course. So based on the lectures that we have so far, uh, if these are the knobs, you can just think about whether these are part of ISA or these are part of micro architecture, right? So number of registers, obviously this is ISA, but the moment I say number of cycles to access a register, it becomes micro architecture because it depends on the implementation, right? Again, width of the register is an ISA. Right, you can have 32 bit, 64 bit, or you can have 128, 256 bit register, which are there in x86 ISA, or maybe one bit two. Right, uh, instruction that uses registers to access memory again, ISA, some ISA may allow, some ISA may not allow. Right, and again, cycles to access memory pretty straightforward, it's micro architecture. Right, so uh, as you can see, uh, anywhere there are some specific uh, specifications, then the, the that, that is uh, part of the IC that will come in the bucket of IC. So, but, but the pertinent question here is where exactly to place this abstraction called IC? Whether you uh, put it closer to your processor or you put closer to your hardware, right? So this way or this way. So there are two school of thoughts here. One is uh, closer to the high level language, right? So that the semantic gap will be pretty small and you can even come up with uh, pretty uh, complex instructions. Imagine an instruction called quick shot in assembly language, right? So, so you just provide a quick shot and it will uh, perform quick shot on uh, a series of array indices, let's say, right? So th this is the one school of thought, which is called the CISC school. Uh, which, which stands for the complex instruction set of computers. The other school of thought is the reduced instruction set of computers. So where it believes in creating a large semantic gap so that the programmer should not be uh, worried about what exactly is happening. And uh, instead of providing complex instructions, it just provides simple instructions. So MIPS instructions, as we have seen so far, these are pretty simple instructions. It doesn't have pretty fancy instructions, right? And irrespective of your uh, CISC or this kind of uh, ISA, you should remember that the final instruction count of your application it is determined by the compiler and ISA, right? 
So the, because the compiler will finally generate the set of instructions for a given ISA. So it's a combination of both that defines uh, your instruction count. So uh, just to extend the debate of RISC and CISC, so as I mentioned, RISC is reduced instruction set of computers. Uh, simple instructions, as you have already discussed, MIPS. Uh, CISC is actually complex uh, instruction set of computers. You will find fancy instructions in CISC, which can take uh, like cycles after cycles just to perform uh, one complicated operation, right? x86 is kind of uh, sys but with some risk mysteries okay so we can't say it's completely risk or completely sys it's kind of a sandwich of uh, both so the mystery uh, with uh, x86 is intel actually converts the sys instruction into risk ones and generate what is called the micro operations okay so for that it uh, uses a pretty uh, sophisticated uh, CISC to RISC decoder and uh, you can actually think about it whether, whether this idea or this design is a good design or bad design. So uh, this particular decoder consumes around 2% of the chip area. So uh, for, for additional 2% uh, area, is this decoder worth if it is what, what, what's the utility, right? So uh, when, when we look at different kinds of ISA, uh, these are the trade-offs that we should look at. First of all, simplicity. Simplicity from the ISA programmer, right? Then all kinds of uh, trade-offs, design trade-offs, performance, power, cost, time to market, how much time it will it take to uh, make it to the market, right? Uh, risk versus CISC, uh, fixed versus variable, variable encoding, uh, Indianness, we'll talk about it in the next lecture. Number of registers for instruction, the code size, as I mentioned, is determined by the compiler and the ISA all together. And finally, open sourced. Whether the ISA is open source, what does it mean? So, uh, at this moment, I will stop with this uh, particular thought. Let's say you get a new billion dollar idea that requires changes to micro architecture. That's option A. The other option is it requires changes to ISA. And the third is it requires changes to both ISA and microarchitecture, right? What will you go for? Which option will you go for? Right. Uh, think about the trade-offs, how it affects the system stack, whether the changes in microarchitecture affect the ISA, does it still uh, respect the ISA, or you have to change the ISA because of the changes in microarchitecture, right? Um, or do you need both in a new contract manner, right? So this is just a thought process that uh, you want to point here. So think about it with that. Thank you.